It's very dynamic. Recall. Uh, yeah, it's hugely dynamic Recall. vocally, yeah. Access to technology is a make or break for blind people in terms of getting an education or seeking employment or maintaining employment. In order for a blind person to use a computer, they need special software called a screen reader, which is software that reads all the text on the computer screen. Actually, how many tracks are there? Uh, 12 tracks. <laughs> screen reading software was extremely expensive, costing more than $1,000. We always used to wonder, why do blind people have to pay so much money when in fact many blind people are unemployed? That idea remained in my mind and I decided to try my hand at writing an alternative to the commercial screen readers. When Mick approached me with this idea of writing a completely free screen reader, I was intrigued but a little bit sceptical, like, look, all of these companies have been working on these really expensive products for years, what makes us think that we could, could write this free thing? Mick and I met at Braille Music Camp, which is a camp for blind and vision impaired people who were reading Braille music. We hit it off instantly. Obviously there was an interest in music, but perhaps more importantly in some ways was we both had this huge interest in technology as well. Mick starting the project really was its you know, very beginnings, but us coming together, a whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? And I think that's very much true for MVDA. In 2006, we started to create NVDA, which stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access, which is a free and open source screen reader for the Microsoft Windows operating system. We started getting queries from all around the world, like in Slovakia and Brazil, like, can we translate this into our language? And I think that's when we realised that this had so much more potential than we'd imagined. Although Jamie and I in Australia needed it because we were struggling to pay for our own commercial screen readers, we didn't realise that there were many blind people around the world who NVDA was the only option. Suddenly, blind people had access to textbooks and magazines and newspapers and all sorts of things that they previously had to work really hard to access. Today, MVDA is used by more than 250,000 people around the world. That's in 175 different countries, and MVDA has been translated into over 55 languages. So, is it okay if we do go run through Illusion of Love? Yeah, sure. Let's give it a shot. If I can remember how to play it. <laughs> A huge part of our philosophy was how important open source was in changing people's lives and in everyone contributing towards a common good. We wanted everyone to be able to contribute to make a difference and to empower themselves, not just to have someone hand them a solution. You're as perfect as can be. You have no faults to me. Why can't you see? that you and me could be. A huge part of the development now is actually done by the community, so there's still very much this idea that the community shapes the future of the product. So in enabling people with disabilities and other minorities in need, we enable them to do their part in ensuring a brighter future for everyone. Thank you. Asara is a piece of software that sits between Reaper, which is a digital audio production application, and a screen reader like MVDA. And it essentially makes digital audio production accessible. So that's things like music and podcasts and audiobooks and all of those kinds of things. There's a huge interest in all things audio in the, the blindness and, and low vision community. Asara makes it possible for blind people to really enjoy that and to dive into that interest and that dare I say, fascination for many people. It was a pretty obvious 
thing, I think, to approach Jamie when we needed an open source extension for Asara. It was very clear to me that Jamie writes robust, effective, bulletproof software. This way, this way. Oh, I got you. London calling. <laughs> How you doing, man? Hey. How you doing? Let's do a handshake. I'm a, Good I'm to a hugger in London, but the heat here, I'm not going to put you through it. Let's do it. Cool. I got involved with Asara. Uh, I guess you would call me like part of the catalyst of it. I got in touch with Jamie and I just kind of bugged him to take a look at the Reaper API like a bunch of times. <laughs> I'd love to get your thoughts on the current drum mix for this yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah. I've got Reaper open at the moment, so we can start okay. with audio and then I can, yeah. Yeah, all right. There are many jobs that are closed or at least difficult for blind and vision impaired people. So if we can take something that they can potentially have an edge in, then that's something that should absolutely be made real and possible. Quite often when I have a new client come into the studio, they may or may not know that I'm blind before they arrive and quite often they don't. They'll get here and their first 10 minutes of them trying to figure out what's going on. And then they're trying to figure out why the computer is jabbering away in the background. And it can change their perspective on what blind people can do. Check, check, check. 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 We're here in the studio with Nick Gill and Matt McLaren, and we're gonna record some tunes. <laughs> All right, sweet, here we go. One, two, three, and... Reaper is the digital audio workstation that I use to do my job. And then Asara translates what's happening on the screen into a usable format for me. So I can take it in and then make adjustments or know what's happening on the screen. When I'm using Reaper and Asara, essentially it's reading out what I'm navigating around using the keyboard. When I'm working with a client and we're putting together their song, Maybe we want to repeat a section or cut out a section or whatever. And as I'm editing, it'll be reading those things out as well. I might soften the attack with a bit of reverb or something there. This is more like this. To me, it's always been really important to be self-sufficient in what I do and to be working on an equal playing field or to be surpassing that. And Reaper and Osara allow that to happen. It's hard to imagine what the landscape of audio production for people that are blind would look like without Jamie's contributions. There's a lot of people using this software who would not have access to recording software. We need more blind people out there working and there's no reason these people can't be working and achieving what they want to achieve. It all comes down to access and people's view of what blind people can do. You've got something going on. I think we've got the verse. That was great, man. Nice job, dude. Thanks. Thanks man. You can come out. So, Mick, I feel like there's a lot of like parallels in terms of how NVDA and Asara have happened, but also where they've landed and how they've learned from each other. Starting a tiny little project has, you know, not only obviously affected people's lives in a practical sense in terms of you know getting them in education and employment and things, but but also just giving these developers something something to do, something to really associate themselves with. Yeah, yeah. Popping up in all sorts of places, yeah. man. Like, um, I didn't realise how many people in the BBC are using it, for Oh, example. really? Yeah. Wow, There's a bunch of cool. them now. Cool. That is cool. Yeah. Knowing that there are blind people around the world doing really cool things, running their own successful studios, their own self-run businesses, Thanks to MVDA and Jamie's Osara. It's amazing. I was born with a lot of medical issues. Doctors really didn't know whether I was going to survive. In fact, they made a choice to keep me alive when I was one day old. And so that has been a real driver, almost been this meaning for my life that I was given a chance. And so therefore, anything that I can do to make a similar impact for others really invigorates me and gives me meaning. Everything that we do should ultimately be you know, empowering other people to make the world better. I mean, that's how you force multiply, how you make something small into something much bigger that honestly just makes the world better for everyone.